Hey guys, welcome to The Homestead. Today we're going to talk about some cold hard truths about homesteading. Also, we're going to talk about a great way to feed free protein for your chickens. I know there's a lot of you guys out there who have been leaving comments below saying, hey, the chicken feed out there, something's wrong with it. There's either the manufacturing process is leaving something out of the chicken feed or putting something into the chicken feed. Our chickens aren't laying or they're not as healthy as they used to be. Something's wrong. I'm going to show you how this summer and this spring you can get free protein for your chickens. I'm talking absolutely free. Well, you might have to buy one little thing, but I mean, it's stay tuned. All right. So the other day, my son comes into uh, the house and he says, there's something wrong with one of our, our sheep. And I'm like, well, what is it? Describe it to me. He's like, well, there's this red blob coming out of her butt. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, that's called prolapse. And um, so long story short, there are things you can do for this issue if it happens to your sheep. This is like the second time it's happened in like 10 years. It doesn't happen very often. But if a sheep does go through prolapse and that is some, you know, her basically her private parts are become inverted or outverted, I guess, and come out. Um, uh, women, uh, human women can can sometimes experience this as well. Anyway, um, there's really only one thing you can do uh, for that sheep, and that's to cull the sheep. Uh, they, You'll find different things online that say, you know, oh, you can treat it this way, you can do this to help it, and you can buy this harness, and you can keep it in. And listen, um, I'm of this philosophy, sink or swim, and it's hereditary. If a sheep has this, there's a good chance she may pass this down to her offspring, and it's better just to cull the herd or cull her out of the herd. And so um, I brought the sheep in the other day, and I, I gave it a talking to, and I said, listen, you're just not working out here. Um, unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go. And she's like, well, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? And I said, well, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to, I heard someone say it the other day on YouTube, you're going to freezer camp. Uh, I forgot who said it. Uh, maybe it was, I don't know who, who that was. For you, yeah, you're going to freezer camp. Anyway, um, so uh, long story short, listen, everything on the homestead has a job. If you're not performing your job, you're fired. It just is what it is, you know. So um, I, I brought the sheep in. We, uh, me and uh, the kids uh, dispatched it yesterday, and I was record, going to record all this. The audio didn't work out very well, and so I decided to scrap it, and I'll just do a video about it here today. Uh, so we turned that sheep into burger, and it will go into our salami um, that we're going to be putting into the smoker um, and, and then basically curing that for about two months. And so we'll, we'll, we basically butchered that and then hamburger salami. So it's going to be a mix of venison, beef, and lamb. Well, it's not really lamb. She's about two and a half years old, so it's more mutton at this point. You know, there's but mutton is still good. I fried a piece of it up after we burgered it, and it was fantastic. So anyway, I love sheep. Sheep ha are fantastic. I have been around on two different occasions in my life, been around goats, and I will never, ever do that again. Goats are like drunk, unruly teenagers who have found the keys to daddy's liquor cabinet. They get up every morning and say, what can I break today? Or how can I kill myself today? Or what can I destroy? Or what can I get into? Or what boundaries can I test? No goats. No goats. No goats. If you have sheep, if you've had goats first and then you go to sheep, you're like, because oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's they're so much more manageable. So much more manageable. Okay, here's the story. Um, for chickens, the free protein for the chickens, um, you want to get a bucket, okay? And I've got a bucket here, and what you're going to do is, and, and the reason I'm telling you this is free, because most of you, I'm assuming, eat meat, okay? You, have, you, you, you eat meat on a regular basis, and if you eat meat, probably, unless you're just buying the boneless, skinless stuff at the store, which you shouldn't be doing anyway, because it's just being clogged up full of clot shots, what you ought to be doing is buying your meat from a reputable farmer, and then if you do that, you're going to have bones in your meat, and you're going to keep the bones, and you're going to freeze the bones, and then you're going to take a bucket like this this spring, and you're going to drill about half-inch holes right here, all around this right here, half-inch holes, you, but maybe a dozen of them, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to get some string, and you're going to tie this up near either in your chicken run or nearby your chicken run under a tree. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take some, a little bit of hay, okay, a little bit of hay, and you're going to put some hay in there, and then you're going to put some 
uh, bones in there. Not, not a lot of hay, just a little bit of hay. You want some stuff for things to crawl around on because you're going to have things crawling around on it. And so you're going to put your bones in there. And actually, I'm sorry, put your bones in there and then put your hay on top. Just a little bit of hay, okay? And just a little bit, okay? Just not, not, not even enough to cover it, just so enough that it's like there's some stuff there. And then you're going to hang that up and the flies are going to come and you want to put a lid on it. You want to put a lid on it with like one hole about right in the center, about yay big, about two inches, three inches hole right there in the center of that, of that lid. And the flies will enter in through the bottom and the flies will enter in through the top. And you're going to put a lid on that and it's going to drop maggots out of the bottom. Okay. And when you do this, all the chickens are going to be down at the bottom going, When's the next one coming? Oh, there it is. Get it. Your, your chickens are basically going to eat all that free protein, and it's going to be give them a higher, a much higher protein diet than you could ever buy at the store. Ever. And it's free because you saved your bones. You saved whatever meat you were using or the scraps, whatever. Don't use kitchen scraps. You want to use meat. Meat scraps. Okay? Fat scraps. Things, something that came from an animal that flies will land on and lay eggs on. And you're going to put it in that bucket and you're going to let the maggots drop and it's going to be free chicken food all summer long. High in protein, which is going to mean high egg production for your chickens. Or if you're raising meat birds, which is even better because they're just going to sit there all day and eat whatever comes down out of that bucket. So it's less moving around for the, for the meat birds. I mean, maybe you want your chickens to move around. It's good for them to get out and forage and stuff like that. But this is a lot of great free protein. I know a lot of people who do this. It has fantastic results. We're going to ramp up our egg production here. We're going to be ramping up quail. We got our incubator going. We are in production mode. I have spelt growing on a quarter acre down here. I've got rice plants to plant rice this spring. We are going to be in full food production mode here on the homestead. And this is one of the things we're going to be in employing is this free protein maker. Again, you get a bucket half inch holes on the bottom, a big about two inch hole on the top, put a little bit, uh, put, put your meat in there and then put a little bit of hay or a little bit of straw on top of it and then let it go. And then when all that's gone, when it seems to open it up, it's going to stink to high heaven. But when it seems like the maggots are not coming down anymore for your chickens, lift it up and say, okay, when you add some more meat scraps and take something out of the freezer that you saved from before because you're saving these things, right? And then you're going to put that on top and boom, more free chicken food. It's like a, it's like a factory. <laughs> and that's what you need to be. You need to put your mind into production mode. How can I produce things? How can I produce stuff? What if you couldn't buy chicken feed anymore at the store? What would you do? You got to think outside the box. You got to think about ways to feed your chickens, how to even save your own hay or how to make, you know, things that are high in seed production that you can give to your chickens that they can eat that. Production mode, production mode. I can't say it often enough. All right, guys, uh, let me know. If you've ever tried this method, I want to hear from you. If you have experience in doing this, like I know a lot of people do, also leave a comment below because I want people to see your comment because they may be able to learn things from your comment. The biggest downside to the method I just showed you with the bucket is that it's going to stink to high heaven. If you have close by neighbors, if you're one of these people who are keeping you know, rogue chickens in your backyard under the gut, you know, without anybody knowing because you got Karens all around you, this might not be a good deal because somebody's going to be like, the neighbors are going to be like, dude, some, something died over that. What's going on? Who's burying the bodies? Because <laughs> it's going to stink. But if you're like us and you've got your chicken run, you know, away from the houses, it's over there somewhere. It's just going to be perfect for you if, you, if you're like that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I can't imagine <laughs> the cops are getting called. <laughs> somebody, somebody call a coroner. Um, something died over there. Um, but yeah, leave a comment below. I want to know what you think. And um, and um, yeah, you know, again about the sheep. <sighs> Poor girl. I don't. She didn't have a name. I, I think her name was zero nine. No, zero six three in the book because we keep log books and she had an ear tag and so her number was zero six three. And uh, that's her name. We, you know, we don't give names to the animals here because your, your time here is limited. You have a job to do. And at some point, we're going to have the, the meeting. It's, it's, uh, it's been great working, work, having you here for us, but your time, we've tried to treat you as, as, as well as possible, give you 
food and give you water and give you a place to roam around in and and you can walk all over the mountain you have free range except for the winter time but you know in the summer and spring you get the range wherever you want you eat whatever you want you have a great life but at some point there's going to be a bad day it's only going to be one day but there'll be a bad day all right guys see you next time in the homestead bye alexander the great did you know when he died his body was placed in a coffin made of solid gold Decades later, Ptolemy X and Cleopatra III stole the coffin and gold artifacts just so they could pay their war debts. Germany, at the time of World War II, stole all of the gold they could get their hands on, and much of it still today has not yet been accounted for. You see, all throughout history, when times get tough, people, either good or bad, seek real wealth. They turn to gold and silver. The central banks and Wall Street cheerleaders would have you believe that gold and silver are just shiny rocks with no real value. But did you know that central banks around the world have for the last year been buying record amounts of gold and silver for stockpiling? Stockpiling for what? What do they know that they're not telling us? Genesis Gold Group is a proud supporter of an American homestead. They help people get out of locked in 401ks and IRAs into something that's real, physical gold and silver. If you're gonna be locked into something, it might be a good idea to talk to Genesis Gold Group about being locked into something physically vaulted instead of just a piece of paper that at the end of the day is just that, a piece of paper. It's a clear surety that our economy is headed for turbulent waters. The nation is currently over $31 trillion in debt and Congress keeps spending money and the Fed keeps printing it. That does not bode well for anyone keeping and saving money in savings accounts or paper denominated assets. Call Genesis Gold Group today, this instant, or visit them online at genesisgoldgroup.com they can put together a strategy that's right for you. And be sure to say that you heard about them from an American homestead. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. Oh wait. <laughs>